WWL Trust has decided to change the way we screen our patients for malnutrition because a more effective way to perform the task has been developed. The Malnutrition Universal Screening Tool, or MUST, has been designed to help identify patients that are malnourished or at risk of malnutrition and its use has been endorsed by the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence. Malnutrition is important because such patients stay in hospital for a longer time, they are more likely to be discharged to healthcare destinations other than home and their likelihood of recovering from an acute illness is worse. MUST has been evaluated in many healthcare settings including outpatient clinics and hospital wards and its use was found to be easy, rapid and consistent. The following video will show you how to complete a MUST assessment. The Malnutrition Universal Screening Tool, or MUST, is a five-step screening tool to identify adults who are malnourished or at risk of malnutrition. We're now going to work through the completing the MUST tool, which we've adapted for use at WWL. After completing the patient's demographic details, step one is to measure the weight and height to get a body mass index, or BMI, score using the chart provided. Firstly, establish your patient's normal weight. The best way to do this is to ask them to recall what they normally weigh. If they're unable to, ask their relatives or carers or refer back to previous weights recorded in the medical notes. Next, establish the height of your patient. If your patient is mobile, measure them against the stadiometer on your ward. If this is not possible, ask the patient, relative or carer to recall the height. If you're unable to do this, you can estimate their height from ulna length. To measure ulna length, ask the patient to place their left arm across the chest and point towards the opposite shoulder. Measure from the point on the elbow to the prominent bony point on the wrist and convert this measurement using the MUST conversion charts. Next, you need to establish your patient's current weight using the weighing equipment on your ward. Having now the height and current weight of your patient, you can refer to the chart to establish their BMI and generate a score. For example, if your patient weighs 46 kilograms and their height is 1 metre and 60 centimetres, their BMI is 18. This would give you a score of 2. On rare occasions, you may not be able to weigh your patient. You can therefore estimate the patient's BMI by measuring their mid-upper arm circumference. To measure mid-upper arm circumference, the patient should be standing or sitting down. Use the left arm ideally. To find your midpoint on the arm, measure from the top of the shoulder to the point on the elbow. Ask the patient to relax their arm, then measure the circumference at this midpoint. If the mid-upper arm circumference is less than 23.5 centimetres, their BMI is likely to be less than 20. If their mid-upper arm circumference is greater than 32, their BMI is likely to be greater than 30. The use of mid-upper arm circumference provides a general indication of BMI and is not designed to generate an actual score for use with MUST. If you have to use mid-upper arm circumference measurements and are concerned about the estimated BMI, contact the dietitians for further advice. Step two is to note the percentage of unplanned weight loss and score using the table provided. For example, if your patient normally weighs 70 kilograms and on weighing them in hospital they now weigh 65 kilograms, this is a weight loss of 5 kilograms or 5 to 10 percent. This will generate a score of 1. Step three is to establish acute disease effect and score. If your patient is acutely ill and there has been or is likely to be no nutritional intake for greater than five days, they score a two. Step four is to add the scores from steps one, two and three together to obtain an overall risk of malnutrition. This score can then be used to follow step five, the care plan, provided at the bottom of the screening tool. Step five, the care plan. If your patient scores zero, they're classified as low risk and would just need routine clinical care. This is indicated on the MUST screening tool, but generally covers offering help and advice with feeding if needed, using appropriate feeding tools, helping with positioning and sitting out for meals, weighing weekly and rescreening weekly, and documenting your action taken in the nursing notes. If your patient scores one using the MUST, screening tool, they're classified at medium risk of malnutrition and we ask that you complete a food and fluid chart for three days. 
Continue to weigh weekly and repeat the nutritional screening till weekly. If inadequate intake is taken and the patient is managing less than half of the meals, please offer non-prescribable supplements such as Complan and Build Up twice daily. If your patient scores two or more on the MUST screening tool, they're classified as being at high risk of malnutrition. So we ask that you follow the care plan for the medium risk patients and refer to the dietitian. And finally, any patients to be commenced on artificial nutrition, e.g. nasogastric feeding, parenteral nutrition, must be referred to the dietitians. The MUST tool is to assist your assessment. If at any stage you're in doubt, use your clinical judgment. The dietitians and the nutrition team will be happy to advise you if you have any concerns or queries. Thank you.